cardiovascular system includes the heart and blood vessels. Usually the heart pumps blood into the blood vessels. The blood vessels circulate the blood throughout the body. Now, blood transports nutrients and oxygen to the tissues and removes carbon dioxide and waste products from the tissues. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood throughout the circulatory system. It is situated in between two lungs in the mediastinum. It is made up of four chambers, which are two atria and two ventricles. The musculature of the ventricles is thicker than that of the atria. The force of contraction of the heart usually depends upon the muscles. Now let us look at the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart has two chambers, the right atrium and the right ventricle. The right atrium is a thin walled and a low pressure chamber. It has got a pacemaker known as the sinoatrial node that produces cardiac impulses and the atroventricular node that conducts the impulse to the ventricles. Right atrium usually receives venous blood via two large veins, which are the superior vena cava that returns venous blood from the head, the neck, and the upper limbs. Number two is the inferior vena cava that returns venous blood from the lower parts of the body. The right atrium communicates with the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. The wall of right ventricle is thick. The venous blood from the right atrium enters the right ventricle through this valve. From the right ventricle, pulmonary artery arises. It carries the venous blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. In the lungs, the deoxygenated blood is oxygenated. Now, let us talk about the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart has two chambers, the left atrium and the left ventricle. The left atrium is a thin-walled and low-pressure chamber. It receives oxygenated blood from the lungs through the pulmonary veins. This is usually the only exception in the body, where an artery carries venous blood and veins carries the arterial blood. Blood from the left atrium enters the left ventricle through the mitral valve. The mitral valve is also known as the bicuspid valve. The wall of the left ventricle is very thick. The left ventricle pumps the arterial blood to the different parts of the body through the systemic iota. Now let us talk about the center of the heart. The right and left atria are separated from one another by a fibrous septum called the interatrial septum. The right and left ventricles are separated from one another by the interventricular septum. The upper part of this septum is a membranous structure whereas the lower part of it is muscular in nature. Now let's talk about the layers of the wall of the heart. The heart is made up of three layers of tissues which are the outer pericardium, the middle myocardium and the inner endocardium. The pericardium is the outer covering of the heart. It is made up of two layers, which are the outer parietal pericardium and the inner visceral pericardium. The space between the two layers is called pericardial cavity or pericardial space, and it contains a thin film of fluid. Now let's talk about the outer parietal pericardium. The parietal pericardium forms a strong protective sac for the heart. It helps also to anchor the heart within the mediastinum. The parietal pericardium is made up of two layers, which are the outer fibrous layer and the inner serous layer. The fibrous layer of the parietal pericardium is formed by the thick fibrous connective tissue. It is attached to the diaphragm and it is continuous with the tunica adventitia of the blood vessels. Because of the fibrous nature, it protects the heart from overstretching. The serous layer is formed by mesothelium together with a small amount of connective tissue. Mesothelium contains squamous epithelial cells which secrete a small amount of fluids that lines the pericardial space. This fluid prevents friction and allows free movements of the heart within the pericardium when it contracts and relaxes. The inner visceral pericardium 
lines the surface of the myocardium. It is made up of flattened epithelial cells. This layer is also known as the epicardium. The myocardium is the middle layer of the wall of the heart and is formed by cardiac muscles, fibers, or cardiac myocytes. Myocardium forms the bulk of the heart and it is responsible for the pumping actions of the heart. Unlike skeletal muscles, the cardiac muscle fibers are involuntary in nature. The myocardium has three types of muscle fibers, which are the muscle fibers which forms the contractor unit of the heart, the muscle fibers which forms the pacemaker, and the muscle fibers which forms the conductive system. The muscle fibers which form contractor units of the heart are striated and resemble the skeletal muscle fibers in structure. Cardiac muscle fiber is bound by sarcolemma. It has a centrally placed nucleus. The myofibrils are embedded in the sarcoplasm. The sarcomere of the cardiac muscle has all the contractile proteins, namely the actin, the myosin, troponin, and tropomyosin. The sarcotubular system in cardiac muscle is similar to that of skeletal muscle. Important difference between the skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle is that the cardiac muscle fiber is branch and the skeletal muscle is not branch. Now, intercalated discs is a tough double membranous structure situated at the junction between the branches of neighboring cardiac muscle fibers. It is formed by the fusion of the membrane of the cardiac muscle branches. The intercalated discs form adherence junctions which play an important role in the contraction of cardiac muscle as a single unit. Now, situ means tissue with cytoplastic continuity between adjacent cells. However, cardiac muscle is like a physiological situ since there is no continuity of the cytoplasm and the muscle fibers are separated from each other by cell membrane. At the site, the membranes of the adjacent muscle fibers fused together to form gap junctions. The gap junction is permeable to ions and it facilitates the rapid conduction of action potential from one fiber to another. Because of this, all the cardiac muscle fibers act like a single unit which is referred to as syncytium. Syncytium in human heart has two portions, which are the syncytium of atria and the syncytium of the ventricles. Both the portions of syncytium are connected by a thick non-conducting fibrous ring called the atroventricular ring. Now, let's talk about the muscle fibers which form the pacemaker. Some of the muscle fibers of the heart are modified into a specialized structure known as pacemaker. These muscle fibers forming the pacemaker have less striation. The pacemaker is a structure in the heart that generates the impulses for heartbeats. It is formed by the pacemaker cells called the P-cells. The sinoatrial node forms the pacemaker in the human heart. Now, the muscle fibers which form the conducting systems is formed by modified cardiac muscle fibers. Impulses from sinoatrial node are transmitted to the atria directly. However, the impulses are transmitted to the ventricles through various components of conducting system. The endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart wall. Is a thin, smooth, and glistening membrane. It is formed by a single layer of endothelial cells lining the inner surface of the heart. The endocardium continues as endothelium of the blood vessels. Now let's talk about the valves of the heart. There are four valves in the human heart. Two valves are in between the atria and the ventricles called the atroventricular valves. Other two are the semilunar valves that are placed at the opening of the blood vessels arising from the ventricles, namely the systemic outer and the pulmonary artery. Valves of the heart permit the flow of blood through the heart in only one direction. Now let's talk about the atroventricular valves. The left atroventricular valve is otherwise known as the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. It is formed by two valvular cups or flaps. The right atroventricular valve is known as the tricuspid valve and it is formed by three cups. The brim of the atroventricular valves 
is attached to the atrioventricular ring, which is the fibrous connection between the atrium and the ventricles. The cups of the valves are attached to the papillary muscles by means of the caudal tendinia. The papillary muscles arise from the inner surface of the ventricles. The papillary muscles play an important role in the closure of the cups and in preventing the backflow of blood from ventricle to atria during ventricular contraction. Atrioventricular valves open only towards ventricles and prevent the backflow of blood into the atria. The semilunar valves are present at the openings of the systemic outer and pulmonary artery and are known as aortic valves and pulmonary valves respectively. Because of the half moon shape, these two valves are called the semilunar valves. Semilunar valves are made up of three flaps. The semilunar valves open only towards the outer and the pulmonary artery and prevent the backflow of blood into the ventricles. Now let us talk about the actions of the heart. The actions of the heart are classified into four types. Number one is the chronotropic action. Number two is the inotropic action. Number three is the dromotropic action. Number four is the bathmotropic action. Now, the chronotropic action is the frequency of the heartbeat or the heart rate. These are two types. We have the tachycardia or increase in the heart rate. Number two is the bradycardia or decrease in the heart rate. Now, the force of contraction of the heart is called the aerotropic action. It is of two types, which are the positive aerotropic action or increase in the force of contraction, the negative aerotropic action or decrease in the force of contraction. The dromotropic action is the conduction of impulse through the heart. It is of two types, the positive dromotropic action or increase in the velocity of conduction, Number two is the negative dramatic action or decrease in the velocity of conduction. The bathmotropic action is the excitability of the cardiac muscle. It is also of two types. Number one is the positive bathmotropic action or increase in the excitability of the cardiac muscles. Number two is the negative bathmotropic action or decrease in the excitability of cardiac muscles.